I'm going to start off with a letter that Steve Covey wrote to Shona Gokenauer, our educational director of Axis of Love. Dear Shona, thinking about you made me recall laying on the floor of an all-concrete jail cell in Placer County, covered with vomit and pissing blood. One of the guards saw I was in trouble and got me to the medical section. It was there, in one of my darkest moments, that I first learned that the San Francisco Board of Supervisors had passed a resolution calling for my release. Wow, was that ever a reality change. It was the ki that kind of pressure that forced the sheriff to allow me to use the Marinol that Dr. Todd had prescribed for me and which saved my life. Later, I learned that it was you, Axis of Love, who was responsible for the San Francisco Supervisor's resolution of support. I also recall how you arranged for me to address the supervisors after my release. And I recall how you spoke up on TV in my defense when 21 police from seven agencies f first pulled me off a plane at San Francisco airport and how you organized supporters who were waiting for me at the gate. Now that my conviction was dismissed, everybody wants to be my f friend again. However, I remember who my friends were when I was being cast by the media as a fugitive felon. You were a friend when I faced some difficult challenges and for that you have my lasting gratitude and support. Let's face it, just about everyone in this movement is a Mashugana. So let's get past that and learn to deal with it. Your friend and loyal supporter, Steve Cubby. So, that gives you some idea of what we do. We advocate for patients. And we've got Kamala Harris. Let's start with her. We've got a letter going to Kamala Harris, who is a friend of our community on some levels. And she uh, is going to receive a letter that reads something like this. Fight the good fight with grace and joy, it's titled. Cannabis government and what is a patient advocate, patient educator, and an industry representative. The Axis of Love SF Patient Advocacy Team has worked for over the last 10 years, seven years, to establish a representative democracy for, a cannabis ma for the Cannabis Nation of San Francisco, which includes everyone in radical perspective and with open forums and debate. This has often led to many er undermining attacks upon my person. So we at Axis of Love are being defined as a caregiver collective facility as opposed to a dispensary which collects funds and or remunerations for their services and medicine. Whereas Axis of Love collects no money from the patients, only from donations. So this is how we want to be different from the rest of the medical dispensaries in legal terms. Well, we have, first of all, we have no registers, no exchange of cash on premises. We have no membership fees or dues. Services are provided for free. Donations in the form of money or medicine to be handled by a patient advocacy organization, not a for-profit medical cannabis business. All overhead operational and administrative costs to be donated via a registered 501c3 or fiscal agent. Cannabis collective facilities to follow a harm reduction peer support model. All compassionate members memberships to be verified as low income, disabled, elder, or veteran. All memberships shall be legally qualified medic medical cannabis patients. CAP membership is at 200 persons. To ensure quality support services, example, uh, fees and uh, dues were charged to patients at Dennis Perone's club on Market Street back in the 90s. Uh, he was attached to a financial enterprise and was not able to attend to thousands of patients' well-being. Compassionate care to be on a daily basis, which is supported by a community chest, medicine to be supplied by a direct garden model. 
and all members, whether donating members, volunteers, or members in receipt of medicine and services shall have an equal vote, one patient member, one vote. The daily operations of CCF shall be provided by patient advocate volunteers, no employees. Volunteerism is a life-affirming activity to many disabled patient advocates. Every member of, of the Compassionate Care Facility participates in the collective as a whole and with their respective skills and abilities. And so, Access of Love is able to secure housing for elder members and we uh, check on people when they're we don't hear from them, we go and check on them because sometimes we're the only people that a patient will talk to if they're ill and they can just go home and if we don't hear from them we send somebody out to, to check on them. And uh, we have snacks, nutritional snacks for every group. And uh, General uh, Attorney General Brown's guidelines where medicine must be tracked before when it leaves the garden it has to be tracked well serious uh, currently many seriously disabled patients have only ten dollars left for the month after paying their rent yet our compassionate community is doing little to enter a state of grace and balance to provide for those whom they wrote in on, who got them elected and voted for them, to pass these laws. Patient advocates work with community-based collectives and cooperatives to create paths for everyone, regardless of their ability to pay, to be able to make their health care choices, which includes high-quality medical cannabis, similar to, to how the AIDS act activists had to stand against the pharmaceutical economy created around their suffering and death. We all know that more people die from pharmaceuticals than tobacco, alcohol, and car accidents combined. So, and no one has died from cannabis. I don't even need to say that. We work with the civil rights leaders within our state, local, and national government. In San Francisco, Act the Axis of Love SF patient advocacy team has worked tirelessly to create boards within our local government. First with Tom Amiano to create the Marijuana Offenses Oversight Committee, MOOC, and secondly with Supervisor David Campos to create the Medical Cannabis Task Force with Supervisor Mercurini to create the non-binding resolution for compassionate care. We are joyful that these seats have become highly sought after and the community fights with such an open heart. <coughs> Item number eight, uh, MCA Recreation Community, Community Center Legislative Fix. For clarity's sake, this is actually a discussion of the CCF, which is the Caregiver Collective Facility. Um, I believe that Shona's going to take point on this, if I'm correct. Um, I have just a, a simple statement that was passed through the other two committees for to adopt those findings, and I just wanted to get a temperature reading from this committee as well. Um, and, and I'm willing to take the other longer documents that me and Sarah prepared and et cetera to, to flush out at another date. Um, the, the simple paragraph was, we heard testimony and concerns and have decided mm -hmm. not to enter an amended definition of MCD itself, but to work on a subcategory to be included to, to uh, distribution of compassionate shares from Garden Direct Giving and the ability of collectives and co-ops to operate facilities that ensures direct care of our elders, veterans, and those living in federal housing and disabled low income who cannot medicate in the living spaces or are homeless which would include a fee waiver if collective met criteria established by DPH and DOS. The solution is still being explored by DPH supervisor <coughs> Campos and the MC, us, I can never say our, our acronym. This model would also ensure that cultivating collectives would be able to release their surplus to the, to the patients would, who would need free medicine and for whom compassionate use was supported by the voters of our state. Um, is that paragraph been distributed to the uh, I think it is email? Yeah. 
I, I don't have that language. Can I look at that? Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm oh. speaking out of order, but I have a question. Sure. <coughs> we have listened to language at the last minute from Kate and Task Force about um, non dispensaries being able to contribute to dispensaries. Or like the, the collectives. Right, right, right. What's this in terms of that? Is this something a completely different statement? Yes. And or no. that, is that a build on that last statement? I, I think they, they're <laughs> they can interrelate, right? My question but is, yeah. This is a, a separate statement right on CCF. Okay. But I do believe that um, Chad and the Cultivation Committee came forward with a simple sentence that would need to be reviewed in the uh, subcommittee. Mm -hmm. Well, here, here's, I'm sorry, before you go for, forward, was this document distributed to everybody? I believe so. Um, I can tell you I did not receive it. Um, and I can tell you I've been through all of Patrick's things twice in, uh, in advance of this meeting because I had about 15, unfortunately, emails on this uh, meeting. I don't have it. So I'm not opposed to discussing the item, but we can't move on it as an action item because of the 72-hour sunshine thing. Well, it's been, it's been sunshine in other committees. So, I mean, if we want to postpone it again, I'm fine with postponing it again, but it's a pretty I'm a straightforward statement. I'm just unclear and concerned on sunshine. That's where my real um, so concern comes from. Point of clarification, part of this, um, this statement has been sunshine. This is a continuation of a statement that was presented at the last medical cannabis task force meeting. Um, and my larger question at that meeting was where do we put this statement in the MCA Act? Remember? Right, and, and, okay. and this really isn't, <coughs> um, the statement is just a statement of fine to be included in the annual report. The actual insertion of the policy is still being vetted, and so where I was hoping to get us from point A to point B was just to kind of give that temperature read of this has been explored, it's going, you know, after the, the recess, you know, I don't really know what the health department is going to create as a criteria for the fee waiver. So I'm kind of on hold as to, you know, but as far as the MCA Act, I don't think it goes into the definition for the more uh, MCA. Right, right. I think it would be something that would go subcategory. Sub -category. Michael? Brent? Uh, I presented a couple times on this. Uh, my purpose of creating it was that some patients who pitch in on a garden uh, to grow their own uh, find that uh, it takes more than nine people to pitch in on a garden. Uh, currently, the rules say that nine patients or more on a collective are required to be an MCD. Uh, clearly, a garden is not an MCD, but not clearly written in our rules, our regulations. So, uh, what, what I had proposed was some way to more define. Uh, non-dispensing collective garden, a garden where patients grow and consume it themselves instead of for a redistribution form and that type of thing. Uh, and that was based on a model of some experimenting I did around town, I guess people wrote about it, uh, where patients can pitch in uh, on the total aggregate cost of a garden and then they just keep their own portion of, of the garden. Right now, an allowable size of a garden is nine patients or less, and each patient can have 24 plants, which equals uh, 216 plants. So having that predetermined size of a garden that's acceptable uh, is okay. Uh, I'm not proposing to increase the size of the garden rather than people can pitch in on it. Uh, a garden uh, of that size can uh, provide cannabis for a lot more patients than just nine. Uh, and oftentimes is the case with a nine patient garden, there's more cannabis left over and then uh, patients maybe sell it to dispensaries door to door or even individually to other patients outside of the uh, dispensary system. What uh, I'd like to see with this document is that we can create a well-defined way patients can take part in the garden, honestly, rather than currently, uh, if someone has up to 216 plants, you can post up to nine notes on your wall and law enforcement will come and they'll count the plants and the notes and it's fine. Uh, that what that doesn't room, leave room for is people to be honest about, hey, more people are actually pitching in on this and consuming the cannabis. Uh, I won't read through the whole document because I hope everyone had a chance to look through it. I was hoping that, uh, 
defining the garden as any number of patients rather than a specific number uh, would leave it more flexible so a patient who can only support one plant uh, or two plants could still take part where uh, right now they're not allowed to. Uh, with the uh, garden size not increasing, we should uh, still keep law enforcement and encounter simple because it's not a bigger or type of garden to encounter a simple plant count. Uh, but what it does do uh, is allow people to be involved in the process of the garden. Well, right now, if only nine people with notes are posted, uh, the other patients who are involved in that production of cannabis don't have any say uh, in the production because they're limited by that notice. Uh, I was hoping that, that through the process, not necessarily to barrel this thing through as fast as possible, get something in writing, but get the concept out there and hopefully get some input from anyone who has an input on the issue and uh, hopefully eventually uh, come up with something that's in writing. Right now, for the council report, I would love to have that in If not, something that's going to pass right now as a concept that needs to be dealt with because this is what's happening in San Francisco today, uh, we shouldn't be. Uh, criminalize patients who happen to uh, can't afford to pitch in on a larger garden and uh, can't pitch in more than kind of patients. So, uh, lower income patients in, in the equation by right. passing this kind of thing to allow First thing I'd like to start with is any questions for Grant after his presentation and then we'll move to discussion because uh, I think it's correct that he shouldn't go through the whole document. Uh, we should be expected to have come and digested this material before you're here. So let's start with any questions from the committee members for Brent. I say David. Thank you. Teresa and then Michael. Uh, yeah, it's really nice to, after hearing this so many times, it, it, just hearing it today, it, it just rings really smooth. This is a really uh, common sense proposal for to have a registration and protection <coughs> from law enforcement encounters, then that might be actually something that I, you know, say, look, there is a value, a quid pro quo, a switch of we give them something, they give us something. Right now, just voluntarily choosing to register uh, a, in, a a collective, you know, grow. I don't know that that helps you or if it in fact hurts you. I mean, that's, you know, me just coming from an individual thing. Now, if you bring it back to San Francisco and look at the 10 person definition of NCD, well, then that, you know, it's like, oh, okay, well, then that gives you a reason why you would actually need this. That still kind of brings us back to a larger ongoing discussion from my perspective is this 10 person thing seems to be awfully arbitrary. And, you know, that's. You know, that kind of puts us back to, you know, what's first. Um, and that's just what I wanted to comment, you know, policy-wise is I really think, you know, this is a great idea. I really like what's actually substantively here. In fact, I think this is, in essence, what the original Attorney General guidelines, you know, kind of envisioned. Not the, not the draft that's being proposed, but the original, you know, concepts. Um, moving into substantive, you know, just text third paragraph down, I would actually really like to change the words, uh, all expenses shall be paid directly from patients to providers. I think saying the word patients and providers is actually kind of reinforcing the current model of a dispensary type of situation where, um, you know, I think it should be somewhere along the lines of all expenses should be paid directly by expense, uh, by collective member proportionately or However, um, but I just don't think you should have that artificial division yes. in this concept of patient to provide. Um, those are my two comments on this. Anybody else afterwards? Um, Shona and then Steph. Um, you know, the Patient Advocacy Committee and, and other you know patient groups have consistently said that the 10 or more is totally arbitrary, doesn't really suit the situation, but then we got a lot of pushback from um, folks that really want the nine or more because they see it as a way of enforcing some protective business protections. Um, and I think what some of the work that, that Fred, myself, and other patient advocates have done is saying, okay, fine, leave that definition, but then if we're gonna leave that 10 person in there, we're gonna create our ways to be able to get medicine to, to the really honestly, the patients 
that need it the most that are not uh, able to afford. And it is really different when you have nine middle class people going into a business type of venture and a garden and et cetera than when you have a large group of low income patients trying to make sure that they have daily medicine. So, you know, that's kind of what I have to say about that. And, and okay. you know. Brent, this is excellent, by the way. Um, and so I, I, I'm, I think I'm just reiterating that this, this seems like a great backstop, but I guess I'm a little bit out of the loop on it. If, if there is any headway being made on this, on this limit of 10 or more, um, is that being addressed elsewhere? And is being, is that really on the table, or is that just kind of something we all agree is arbitrary, but nothing's really been being done about it as a sacred cow? Let's we'll take this one. Um, Brent wants to respond directly to that, um, and then David afterwards. I was, uh, I recently went through my notes from 2004 and 2005 when we were working on it, and uh, the beauty of leaving uh, E in the definition was because uh, they said, <coughs> not, we said, I tried to not use the they word, uh, what we wanted to deal with was uh, storefront uh, dispensing collectives first, and then we would leave a space for collective gardens. We have a space there at uh, E that was reserved for collective gardening. Just to what he show, show everybody what he's talking about, literally the first section of 3301 under definitions starts with A, cannabis, B, city, C, convicted, D, director, E, reserved, and then F, medical cannabis dispensary. To me, it <laughs> would be an ideal uh, So area. without having to change the definition of uh, 10 patient or more MCD, all we would do is merely be defining a non-dispensing collective gardening. That doesn't change any other uh, ordinance in the rule. Uh, and it doesn't really restrict uh, collectives in any way whatsoever because this is a unique and uh, a unique uh, collective. It's not a dispensing collective, so it doesn't affect how they operate. It's not a regular nine patient or less collective because it's different. This is specifically for people who only want to uh, gather to grow for self consumption. Uh, and we do have a spot, a simple spot. Uh, David, then I'm going to have a question as well. Just a quick response to that uh, comment. Um, we tried to change the 10 patient number once, I think in 2008, and actually got sort of through it, and then the city attorney's office and the planning department had a meltdown. It's not to say that the board can't do it, because the legislative body makes these rules, but there seems to be a lot of investment in that number by the folks, the regulators, who are responsible for regulating the behavior of cannabis-related uses in San Francisco. So I don't think it's possible, but there's they're just very married to that as a regulatory tool like for defining the scope of activity. Um, and it seems kind of like a dead issue just because we got like, they went, they went bananas. Maybe I should use different trying to I'm going to comment and then Chris. Um, I did want to say relative to this, um, there is an interesting example of the city of Spassical has authorized several <coughs> classifications of prohibition. They've gone further than this. So I'll write that, but they authorize dispensaries to cultivate their memberships, non-dispensing collectives to cultivate, um, and individual patients and caregivers to cultivate themselves. So yeah. it's actually in the code, so we have it for that to you and anyone would like to look at it. Can you, can you David, can you forward that to me? Sure. Um, I wanted to comment on, you know, the idea of one of the concerns I also have with this is the city is strongly moving towards regulating gardens right now. They aren't there yet, but they voice their concerns of saying, look, we want dispensaries to report where this is coming from. We at some point you know, might want dispensaries to take this over. Those are all, you know, potential directions the city's headed in. I don't see how we could also add this on without some disclosure of the actual address. And then the actual issue of the address, then, well, if you're disclosing an address, are there going to be distance requirements, too? I certainly wouldn't want to start trying to grow next to a school just from the you know sheer issues of criminal liability that could be attached <coughs> to that. So I mean, right now, as it stands here in the city, there are no residential grow restrictions. There are restrictions in terms of kind of square footage issues. There's restrictions in terms of you know whether or not it's uh, up to code requirements. There's a host of issues like that. So I kind of have a practical concern when it comes down to choosing a location that's going to actually work for something like this, because in essence, you're making a formalized garden proposal and choosing to voluntarily register it with the city. 
those are, you know, both can, I think, uh, come up on the radar for the city's concerns. Left the garden, some of us uh, choose to be out of the closet with it, and uh, I don't have a problem with saying for our right to do our own and for more than nine patients collectively, and uh, this is just an effort to decriminalize a group of patients that's already doing it and is going to continue with this and pass this round. Thank <laughs> you.